While the first snowfall of the season continues to slowly drip away outside, the melting process is in full effect inside this Swiss restaurant. Fondue is served. It's just really, it's a wonderful experience to be able to do this in Switzerland. Because it's the Swiss who first produced the marriage of melted cheese and bread that's famous around the world. In Switzerland's capital city of Bern and high in the Swiss Alps, the visitors from Newbern have treated their eyes to a visual feast. Now it's time to share the joy with their taste buds. I love cheese. Cheese and good bread is my passion. And both are at their best here in the Emmental region of Switzerland, just outside of Bern. To many of the folks in the group, this meeting around the melting pot is one of the highlights of the trip. We went through the fondue period, and I used to do there a lot, and uh, I loved that, and so that was a real, real special uh, treat. The fondue was wonderful, and it's especially wonderful because we watched the whole process of how it was made. An endeavor that begins with a herd of red Holsteins, some of whom are happier to see a camera than others. After all, they're on a strict diet. Taste is critical to the finished product they'll help create. Our cows here are not allowed to eat silage. No alpha alpha, no corn silage, that's forbidden because there can be in a bad bacteria and that would spoil the cheeses. We say from eating just grass and hay, a cow can produce about 20 liters of milk. The dairy produces several varieties of a cheese known as Emmental named for the region where it was created. Visitors can see it at every stage, a liquid vat, a solid wheel, and of course, the steamy serving pot. Now, you may be asking yourselves, what in the world is this Emmental cheese that everyone talks about? I've never heard of it before. Well, you have tasted it before because what's called Emmental cheese here in Switzerland is called Swiss cheese back in the States, and let me tell you, it's even better. Mm. But don't take my word for it. UNCTV's resident food aficionado Bob Garner isn't on this journey to Switzerland. Mm. But his first cousin Nelson McDaniel is. Mm. Good. These days, the dairy uses modern cheesemaking equipment, but visitors can still see how one of Switzerland's signature products was created a century ago by fire in a copper vat. It looks like a pudding now, like yogurt. Huh? Now the cheesemaker will take the cheese heart and he starts cutting the mass. To separate the water from the cheese. If he cuts too close to each other, in the end we will have only cheese dust and no lovely cheese grain. So it's really important. After the cheese cubes are separated out, they're put in a hoop to dry. It's a technique that actually hasn't changed all that much over the years, but the process is faster now. When the milk is brought to the dairy until it's cheese, it takes about three hours, three and a half hours. The cubes are still cut from the liquid like the old days, but the water that remains is forced out more easily now. They get pressed. This is a hydraulic press and that takes about five hours. And then the cheeses are so dry and hard that we can take them out and we place them on a rack. After that, the aging process is off and running. Some of the cheeses are ready to go after as little as four months, but others can go three years. By this point, the Emmental is all in wheel form, rolling between three aging cellars. That I find very fascinating, how they go from one room to the next and watch it and turn it. The warming and cooling cellars no doubt contribute to the taste, but much of that was determined at the very beginning. The flavor you get from what the cows are eating, so this natural grass. With milk that's much different from the variety in the United States. It's just a natural cheese. We don't pasteurize the milk. We don't add any flavor or color stuff. It's just pure. But the cheese makers do add a few enzymes and a couple of types of good bacteria. We have lactic acid bacteria. We have got propionic acid bacteria. They have got a chemical reaction and split off is carbonic acid gas. Carbonic acid gas that's critical to the look of the cheese because when the gas is heated, it expands, forming the cheese's iconic holes in the process. It makes this cheese unique. That's just the one and only who has got these holes, and that's the Emmental cheese. 
The New Bernians are wrapping up their visit to Emmental with full stomachs for sure, but their minds are in consumption mode too. Many of the Swiss settlers who left for Newbern with Christopher de Graff and Reed 300 years ago were farmers in this part of Switzerland. I have ancestors from here, from the Emmental, and I'm very proud of that ancestry, that Swiss ancestry. To get here and to see where they lived, it just heightens my awareness of, of who I am, who they were, the way they lived here. Lingering among the memories of a tasty adventure is a bit of curiosity and dreams of what if. The only thing is, I don't know why, I don't understand why we didn't get the cheese tradition in Newburn. We, we didn't get that. They didn't bring that with them for whatever reason.